Theme song, theme song, theme song. Theme song. Come on, you're away oh, from the microphone. My well, wife le- yells at you again, <laughs> Lemon. <laughs> you are a lemon. You're all citrusy and sour and bitter. You know, I really like lemon heads. It's like one of my favorite candies. <laughs> I know. I've lived with you long enough to know all of your favorite candies. That's not true. It's not true. Name a candy I don't know that you like. Can it be non-existent? Sure, Harry Potter. No, you know, no I mean, can it like not exist anymore? Yes. Like it used to exist? Yes. Oh, there's a milkshake bar. I know, you told me that. No one. <laughs> well, that's going to suck for the next 28 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that made me get that in my giggle spot arc. That's the first G spot that's been here for a long time. And we're in this room. Boom, 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 boom. Um, what do you want to start with? Oh, I don't know. I, I just how how's things going? How was your day? I was out. I was working. I was kids. wild today. My first day off in a while. That was nice. Um, I worked out with Stacia, um, and then I sat on my ass. So what have we been doing? Oh, we we went and. We went and got to see some friends at the comedy store, which was nice. That was nice. I got to do comedy for the first time since March, so that was nice. I mean, I didn't do as well as I wanted, but it was really weird not having an audience. And I wasn't even on the stage. They have you off the stage. And at one point, they forgot I was even standing there, which was super awkward and made me feel really bad about myself. Um, But I was okay with it. Like, I was fine. I was, I kind of knew and we went in that I was going to bomb. So whatever, but it was still, I got to touch a microphone and one of the managers at the comedy store bought me a drink and one of the custodian guys stole me a face mask. So like winning. So so it was productive. It was fun. Anyway, when it was productive for you, I missed it. Like just, and you said it too, when we were sitting there just watching Kill Tony, they were doing tapings, and you even looked at me and go, fuck, I missed this. Oh, yeah, I always had, we always had such a good time on the Monday. Yeah, it was the only thing. It will, it'll happen again, it's just a matter of when. How cool would it have been if Matt and Angela were there? That would have been cool, because Matt and Angela are our Kill Tony couple. <laughs> they're, our, they're our couple. Our illegitimate family members from and, Kill Tony. And we, Matt, oh God, we've been sitting with Matt for ever years yeah i mean we'd only been going a few months i think probably six months before we teamed up with matt and uh-huh matt, he's been our seat and part seating partner ever since yeah and then he'd bring his girlfriend angela who has the best hair and yeah that was fun, fuck. That was fun. in fact when we were there i was like fuck i really miss them and i really miss this but just fucking around the only thing that kind of sucked is i walked in there as a comedian and became a massage therapist. But that's what's happened to you since like day 17 there. I know. And you know what? I was fine with massaging Josh because Josh is family. And then Jamar, who is just, I have to, every time I see Jamar and I massage him, he, I have to convince him he doesn't have cancer. And I told you that how, like when I first started working there, and then um, William Montgomery somehow snuck in, which was very odd. And he was almost a real person. Like, he goes, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And I was like, is this you? Like, I don't think I've Because William. He's always on. He's always on. I was in a belly room show with him. And he goes, I'm really nervous. I think I'm going to bomb. And, of course, I turn mom because that's just who I turn into. And I was like, you're going to be fine. You're going to be great. And I was like, you're fucking with me right now. And I was like, God damn you. And then I've heard him do that in all the green rooms where he's like, yeah, I'm just going to bomb. I'm not doing very well. And I was like, you motherfucker. I think he looks for that attention. Ah. He's kind of an attention whore. Well, I think all of us comedians I guess that are. Comedian as well. You know what? I'm not even comedian that much. Yes, that's why we started this. Because you had one and I didn't. <laughs> I mean, kind of. Yeah, I mean, but and I miss mine. I miss happy endings. I'm sure you could get people on it. I probably could. It's just finding out It'd be hard. where to record it. And I liked everybody. You'd have, you'd have to go back to OG. 
Yeah, and it sucks because, I mean, I'd have to get a better camera because everybody likes the visual. Right, it's all about the video. Yeah, which is going to be in this podcast future. Eventually, yeah. I mean, here in the next couple months, probably we'll start something going, get something going on. That's what I said, in this podcast future. Like three months. Yeah, and I mean, hell, we, I don't know, like, Probably There's, we'll have to start a couple more, too. I mean, I, I definitely still want to do one with Brody and, and the boys if they want to do one. Right. The little boys. And just have fun talking to them. How speaking of Brody, Brody Stevens, I massaged him in the in the main room when Holtzman was on stage. That was funny. It was good, it's, Holtzman's hilarious. He's one of my favorites. <laughs> you know what, though? He pretends to be an asshole, but he's one of the only comedians who has walked me to my car. Like, he's like, I will walk you to your car. And then another one, Spence Griffith, who is out there as well, and he's walked me to my car. So it's funny. Chivalry isn't dead. It's just in some odd it's people. just dormant. <laughs> well, you know what? As soon as they had, like, what were you impressed with the word? That was a good word. I can't take credit for that because, oh, I mean, the word existed for many, many years. But... I- <laughs> But I stole the line. I stole the line and the cadence from basketball. (laughs) Okay. From from the movie basketball. I I know you don't have to put your hand out like that. that? Yes. Yes. You remember that part of the movie? Yes. You've made me watch that movie a billion million times. It's It's awesome. It's like a great movie. Okay, let's see. John's movies that he's made me watch a million billion times. Go. Basketball. Yeah. Back to the fuck me future. One, two, and three. (laughs) <laughs> Independence Day, because you have a weird... You know what? I haven't watched that in years. You haven't, but you used to have a hard-on for I Will liked, Smith. I liked it. It was fun. I wasn't going to say hard. I I was going to say, yeah. I didn't want to like go touch peepees with him or anything. Yeah. I mean, you can make it. was a, like Man Crush Weird, I guess. Capital letter H. I liked his movies. I know you did. And then they kind of faded out. Yes. And those are the main, main ones that you've made me watch a lot. Yeah, <laughs> and then I make you watch girly movies because that's just what I do. I don't do a lot of girly things, but there are some shit. Like I've noticed because I've been looking at estate sales now because you know we're gonna have to decorate our new place. We're going for dead people stuff. Yes, I. Ding dong. I um. Can we empty the urn and take that? We want to put flowers in that. It's so pretty. Did you bring me <laughs> flowers? I don't want flowers. You'd be like, is that? Barbecue ash? You're such an ass. <laughs> no, but I want like. Oh my god, the cat just took a dump in it. We don't have a cat. Sorry. I scared your me. cat away. I you know, don't take you a fuck. You did take it. You did. I did not. You scared my poor pussy kitty. <laughs> I didn't mean to. He laid on me and drooled on me. It just ran away when I moved in. Oh, fuck another crazy bitch. I'm. Out, dude. Okay, but at least I'm not crazy like Whoa. the first one. You're, like you're the, a different crazy. Yeah, but you've stuck with me way longer than her. That's true. Mm-hmm. I would have freaking murdered myself by then. <laughs> okay, so um See I had to do it there. Yeah. See what I did? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Um so earlier this week you and I were talking about dreams. Like not Goals and aspiration dreams, but straight up sleep REM dreams. Yeah, right, right. right. And um, we decided to talk about that. Is that something you still want to talk about, or do you want to go somewhere else? I don't know. I'm trying to think. I mean, I can only really think of a couple off the top of my head. Like the one, the one that I killed myself was probably one of the most intense dreams I've ever had. Ever had. I have that one. I have. I wrote that one down. I wrote where you shot yourself in the head. And your horror movie dream. That one was creepy, too. And I think I'd, I'd probably just watched, like, House on Haunted Hill or something. So it's probably why I, like, had that weird feel in that dream. Isn't Derek in that movie? I, I think, think he's so. in 13 Ghosts. No, I think he's in House on Haunted Hill. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I know he's in Signs. That's right. He plays the alien. Uh-huh. Which Caleb, when Caleb was little, that was Caleb's favorite movie. Which is so wrong and makes me a... Bad, bad parent. But right. So when we're going back to dreams, so yeah, it, yeah. it's just basically having that 
dream that's so vivid that you feel it. Right. Like, like when, I, when I, I can still, I don't know why people were chasing me in my dream. They were all in black. Wait, which, which one? This, the this horror is, movie? No, this or is the... when I opt myself. Okay, okay. So, so I don't know. All I remember part of the dream where, where I come into the dream and what I remember of the dream is only about like a 10 second snippet that could have taken hours. I don't know. Right. But what happens is, is I know these guys are coming to get me and they're all in these black outfits, you know, Mm -hmm. like all suited up and like they're military garb type dudes. Right. And, and I'm standing there with my buddy sale and I look at him and I go, fuck dude, they're coming. And he looks at me and I look at him and I nod to him and I fire a gun through the temple in my head. And there's a burning sensation that shoots through me and they're all, all the dudes are about to circle me. And I, as I'm falling and I hit the ground, I look at my buddy, Sam, and I give him the freaking nod like later. And I fade to black and I wake up and I have this burning freaking stream, like where a bullet went through my head, like for 10 minutes. That's crazy. Like hot, just a hot, Shot like that sounds disgusting. I just said hot shot. <laughs> I've had a hot shot in my face I had a couple a hot of times. Across my temple, the hottest thing I've ever. <laughs> so, but no, but don't I let could, it get in your eye. It fucking stings. I could, I could fe- literally feel the heat in my brain, like across from one side to the other, and it felt like it was like just beaming, like a perfect ray, like there's nothing above, nothing below, just a perfect circle, like where a bullet would have just went right through. It was fucking creepy as fuck. You know what else is creepy as fuck? That Perfect Circle album cover with the banana slug? I don't think I've seen it. No, it's ugly. I hated that, that CD was weird. cover. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> you said you Perfect took away Circle. That dream to take go and talk about that. You asked me to talk about that. So, it was intense and it was super super creepy because I don't think I've ever had anything feel like that before. No, that's crazy. When you first told me that, it was crazy. And then what the horror story one. That's another one of those. That's weird. Yeah, I showed him the perfect circle. That, that's another one of those where you just come in like... I, I can re- remember bits and pieces, but the only strong parts of it... Yeah, tell them that part. The only strong part I can remember... And it, what, what's actually kind of funny is if you... Uh, old people like me... Who who know what the movie Strange Brew is? Have you ever heard of the movie? No. Okay, I'm gonna make you sit down and watch that retarded movie. Uh-huh. Sorry. I oh my mean, god! I say it every episode. We went two episodes with you not saying it. Two. Let me take that back. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I took it back, and then so what happens is Bob and Doug McKenzie are these little Canadian dudes. Oh, you're talking about the movie now? Yeah, okay. And, you know, and they're, hey, how's it going, eh? It's Rick Moranis and Dave Chappelle. I can't think Thompson. of his last name. I want to say it, it might be Dave Thomas. I know it sounds like the Wendy's. And I can't remember his name. And I'll look it up and I'll, and I'll get it right. But there are these little Canadian dudes and they go on a mission to this freaking, they want free beer. So they put a mouse in a freaking bottle and go to the brewery. And then they end up in this weird, it's, it's not even explainable. Dave Thomas. Is his name Dave Thomas? Yeah. Okay. I guess that. <laughs> so they're dressed in like this Canadian garb where they're, uh-huh. where they're wearing like, you see what they're wearing? Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's kind of what I feel like we were wearing. Okay. okay. I swear to God, that's what it, I swear to God, that's what it was. Almost to the, almost to the T. Okay. Okay. That sounds ridiculous. So watch, look at the strange brew picture, and then you'll know what I mean. I'll post it on our Instagram. All, all two people. <laughs> There's more than both of two. them. Okay, oh. maybe four. So, so anyway, I walk in, and there's a TV sitting there, and it's on, and I'm staring at the TV, and in the TV, I'm watching. Um, and it's just, it's almost just like watch, looking at an empty camera of exactly where you are. Like uh-huh. In this house where you walk in this living room, right? I could tell you, you walk in through this front door. On the left, it's a, it's like a half wall. Uh huh. And then there's like a little like living room, and you go farther, and then this is where I'm at. Uh huh. Okay. Get close to your mic. 
<laughs> so, so there's this TV, and then almost like on one of those old school roller stands with the TV strapped down to it, uh-huh, uh-huh. it's one of those. And I'm standing there, and, and it's me and somebody, and I can't remember who's with me, but we're standing there looking at the TV, and in the TV, we see, you know, the outline, or, well, we see basically where we're standing, but we're not in the picture. Right. And then all of a sudden, you see us walk into the picture, and then we're standing there, and I'm like, holy shit, dude, that looks just like us, and then they both turn around and look at us. That's fucked up. And I freaked out and woke up. <laughs> <laughs> it just gave me chills. That was the longest story for that. Are they multiplying? Are you losing control? Um, no, they're decreasing it. Grease, by the way. Grease is another of the million billion t- shows John has made me watch. Grease. Hey, John- hey, 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 you're, 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 you're moving. You're hurting my man side. <laughs> if I wanted to hurt your man side, I'd Can make you tell you- him I have Grease 2 soundtrack on my phone. <laughs> Fucking oh. cool writer, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I was going to take away your man card, I'd make you tell the bat story. Oh, my God. The bat that flew around the house was in fucking funny as shit. <laughs> so I had a little tiny bat get in the house, and it was flying in circles like it was oval racing. <laughs> and, and I didn't know how to get said bat because I don't know how to get a fucking bat. i never even seen one up close except for on TV. This reminds me of the great outdoors. Holy shit. And so, the squirrel in Nashville. So I'm like, okay, so maybe I can throw this sheet on. The bat and then get it outside. That way it doesn't hurt it and I don't have to smack it and I don't have to. And, <laughs> and I fucking fake. I tried to get this thing and every time I'd miss and then it'd fly toward me and I'd freaking run out like a little sissy. <laughs> and then finally, finally, my oldest son, who's <laughs> playing a video game, gets up off the game, walks over and goes, picks up a freaking broom and goes bang and knocks the freaking thing to the couch in like two seconds. And I go, fuck, man. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I chased that fucker for ten minutes, and he just walks up in one shot and just took my manhood away from me. And then freaking, I just like wrapped it in a sheet, and took it out, and just acted like, oh man. But it reminds me. No, it, you tell the story better when you do the <laughs> like when it's trying to touch you and your little feet go, all Flintstone. <laughs> well, I can't show you. I'll show you in the future when we have video. I'll jump around for you. That's what makes you happy. But speaking of, no, no, we all know what makes me happy, and you've only done it once for me, and you've done it four or five times behind my back. Oh, I do it all the time behind your back. That's so bullshit. I do it almost exclusively behind your back almost every day. So speaking of Grease, John, in the very end of the movie, there's a dude. It's just one of the regular, like the extras, right? Yeah, it's just some dancer dude. He does some penguin walk. And I know, it's wiggling, we know. And John does it perfectly, and he only did it for me once. And then every once in a while, he'll be like, oh, I just did it behind your back. Which, you know, I flash my titties. And it's very much kind of like the Charlie Chaplin thing, whatever. Is that not what it is? Isn't that what it's kind of doing? Yes. That shit's funny. Speaking of our oldest, though, when he was little, and he was dreaming, and he was sitting in the middle of his floor... Yeah, Indian style, or crisscross story. applesauce, I guess we call it now. Crisscross applesauce, staring at a fuzzy TV, like snow TV. Well, what, if you remember, actually, when we first walk in the room, and we, we're walking down the hallway, mm-hmm. and he's sitting facing the hallway. He's facing outward. I don't remember Yeah, that. he's facing outward toward the hallway. Like, he's looking at us coming down the hallway. And that's why I was like, hey, buddy. And his, everything was there. His eyes were open, everything. And that's when I walked in the room and I go, what are you, uh, what are you doing? And he goes, I'm watching TV. And I looked at the TV and he pointed and I looked at the TV and that shit was just the snow like poltergeist. I freaking pooed a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And that I was like, okay, yeah, I'll marry this guy with this demented kid. Well, <laughs> well. <laughs> All right. Well, and then, you know, our middle son, when he talks in his sleep, that's fucking the funniest thing ever, man. That one night, everybody was sleeping, and he goes, are there any survivors? And I was like, me? I survived? I just thought of another dream I had. Okay. The bits and pieces of it where some terrorists attacked the base, and I was working on a ship. Uh-huh. And I wasn't, I was working for the ship. But I wasn't working on that. On in the dream, I wasn't. I was back in my older days. Okay. 
And then we had to like jump through freaking like uh, little freaking porthole windows and like try to swim and safe to safety and duck fly, gun fire shooting at us. It was crazy. That's all I remember. Yeah. That was fun. All right, moving on. <laughs> Okay. It was an action movie. Real fast, boom. Bang. Done. Action <laughs> sequence over. Now back to boring. Montage. Dun, dun, dun. Back to boring because I'm going to tell a story. Is that... Gonna, is that what's going to happen? Are you going to tell one right now? Well, oh, shit. Go ahead. There was one. That was a great... You're such a good girl. No, I don't want to now. You talk. This seems to be John's episode. So, booka, booka, booka. <laughs> Anyways, stop it. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Um... I don't want to tell it anymore. Tell it. Everybody no. wants to know. Three <laughs> people want to know. Four with me. No, when I was dating Don, I started a. You know this story. Juan? Don. You don't want to say Juan? Oh. Fuck that guy. Donathan? Yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> I, I, anyways, Peter. when I was working at at and I started working at at and Wireless, and this is the first time I've ever done a customer service. Now, I can do customer service fucking usly. But anyways, I was so nervous and so just like in my head about it that I was sleeping and I was dialing numbers on his back. And he was like, Joy, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm trying to get a hold of the operator. And he's like, Joy, you're in bed sleeping. And I go, you're no fucking help. And I turned around. And- <laughs> how, about, how about recently you said I woke up and I was like, I believe you. <laughs> That's right. I believe you. It's okay. <laughs> I believe you. What did you do wrong? I cheated on you, remember? Oh, my God. But you know what's funny? Every time I tell somebody I had a, ger- or had a dream, what was it, like two weeks ago? I had a dream that I cheated on you. Everybody's like, who did you cheat on? Who did you cheat on him with? And I don't know because I came into the dream with you confronting me. And you were like, Josh Adam Myers told me that you, and I was like, oh, dang, Emma, somebody from the comedy store, you dirty, dirty, dirty girl. Yeah. Forever so, unclean. <laughs> Josh told you, and I, like, in my normal head, like, I was like, I would never cheat. I'm not a cheater. That's just not what I do. But in my dream head, I was like, oh, fuck, he found out. Like, because in my dream, I cheated on you. I don't know with who. I don't know if it was good. I don't know if it was worth it. All I know is like, I was like, I was going to tell you. And you were like, well, Josh told me first. And I was like, fuck. And then you got divorced. And I don't. And then I woke up. You're probably lucky. That was probably the part two. Part two is when we get divorced. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we got to split the dogs. You're thinking about it. You know which dog you would take. And you're such a dick. You'll have the other two. Oh, my God. No, you'll have one. I'll just leave you with Delilah. Oh, you're going to take Mitzi Moo, too? Yeah, she loves me more. I know, but I want... She was supposed to be mine. I wanted something that would only love me and nobody else. And when I got home, she was already in love with you. And when we went to bed the first night, she slept on your back. Fucking piece of shit. Do you remember when we first got Farley? And we were like, okay. And you like, we were gonna, you were going to pick him up to put him up on the bed. And he just was all... Boom. And we're like, holy shit, that dog just jumped like two and a half feet up, or two feet up in the air. And he's like 10 inches tall <laughs> and like 35 pounds with no legs. Well, did you ever have any recurring dreams? Because I had two when I was little. I I want to say I did, but I can't. Right now, I can't. I can't bring them up in my brain. My brain's in lockdown at the moment for that reason. I don't know, for some reason. That vault's closed for some reason. But I had two. Okay. That I remember vividly. One was we swam to Hawaii because my dad didn't want to pay for airline tickets. So he made us swim to Hawaii for... Keep up the sharks are coming. That's, That's what it was. Coming. And there were sharks. And like they were like one was a friendly shark and then there was the evil shark. And I always got... The evil shark would always eat me. So I never got to go to Hawaii. But it I was, sounds like a video game. But I was terrified. Like I and remember. I that's why you're terrified of sharks now. Maybe. But then I had another dream where my dad. We would go to this restaurant, this shitty ass restaurant in Madeira called Farnessi's. And but for some reason in the dream for Farnessi's, the off ramp to go down was like really steep, 
And I never wanted to go down the hill. It was like, you know, like one of the roller coasters today. Right. And I just, I hated it. And I hate, I'd be like, no, no, I don't want to go. And then like, we just descend really fast. See, I can't think of any other. I remember my mom telling me when my dad used to race motorcycles back in the 70s that she woke up in the middle of the night and he was freaking grabbing the throttle and shifting gears with his feet. And, <laughs> What about when your mom ate the cheeseburger? Oh, yeah. My mom sat up and told him, this is a wonderful cheeseburger. And he goes, um, uh, all right, go back to sleep. No, no, take a bite. No, <laughs> no, I, I don't want a bite. Go back to bed. Take a goddamn bite. Oh, mm, mm, that's a wonderful cheeseburger. And then she goes back to bed. <laughs> what about when you start, when you, like, it was almost when you first started watching MMA UFC. When I tried to choke you when out. When you put me in the headlock. Like, I got in a fight with somebody and I choked was, you out. I can tell you who it was. It was Chuck Liddell. No, I don't Yes, think it so. was. No, that's so funny. I must have been watching a lot of fights then. It was Chuck Liddell. You had me in a headlock. I was like, John, John, John. And I had to actually physically tap out for you to be like, okay, and then you got mad at me because I woke you up because you were winning. <laughs> I was winning the fight. You were winning the fight That's against awesome. Chuck Liddell. I know it was Chuck Liddell because you were like, man, I had Chuck Liddell in a headlock. I'm like, no, no, no. You had me in a headlock. Well. <laughs> and you were just like. My you, dream was perfect. Just like we were pissed when I woke you up for the earthquake because you're all, I still have 30 minutes to sleep. I was like, bitch, it's 2020. Bad things are happening. Like, I know, I had to start sleeping with underwear on again. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Last night, when I was playing with your underwear, because my hands were too tired to reach your dick, and you kept saying that I was jerking your underwear off, and they were happy. Because <laughs> I was too lazy to lean over like three more inches, so I just jerked your underwear off. <laughs> last night. That's a fantastic fix. Life here out of score play. <laughs> was. I got you. Let, later. Then, all of a sudden, you're disappointed. It's fantastic. You were all, are you trying to get sex? I was like, well, yeah, but you're really far away. Yeah, so. but you were whacked off my underwear. Well, they enjoyed it. Did they not? I, I don't know. I think you took a couple layers of cotton off <laughs> them, so now I gotta <laughs> buy a new pair. They're already holy. <laughs> Uh, that's, um, I have my, okay. All I have right now is uh, we talked about dreams. Um, Caleb talking in his sleep, Tyler. The only other thing I have here is snowball and the cheese Danish. Have I ever told you the story of snowball and the cheese Danish? No. Okay. So we had this yellow lab. Do you remember snowball? No, I never knew that dog. Okay. Well, maybe, but I, I don't remember. Snowball was my pride and joy. Right, I remember she was a white lab, right? She was a yellow lab, yellow and lab. she had a red nose. She looked like Rudolph. And anyways, my dad was somewhere, Adam was somewhere, so it was just me and my mom. And for some reason, we well, we had went to Burger King, but Burger King used to sell these cheese danishes, and they were so good. So my mom bought one, and later on that night, it was just her and I. And she's like, Joy, let's go warm with that cheese danish. And I was like, cool. So we put it in the microwave and we got it all buttered and it looked so good. And then something happened. Like I think Snowball created a diversion and we went out of the kitchen and then came back into the kitchen. We were like salivating because we knew this cheese Danish was going to be so good. And then Snowball was sitting in the middle of the kitchen just licking her lips. Did she tell you it was good? She did. <laughs> My mom, to this day, we still talk. We're like, man, do you remember that cheese Danish? And my mom was like, man, it would have been so good. That sounds like stoner talk. <laughs> man, that well, I okay, mean. Okay, okay, I got it. All right, I get you. My parents. So I, I got it. I understand. Yeah. I see, I see, what you're, I see what's happening. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> I was not. <laughs> but. Yeah, that's all I have on my list. Nothing really happened this week. I just worked a lot. So many patients. You know, I'm coming up, you're coming up on a whole, in a couple weeks here, uh, a weekend free of Dad and Brody. Yes, it'll and Tyler. And, uh, well. Will he be back by then? Yeah, he'll be back. He comes back next month. Fuck. 
So, so yeah, he, 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 uh, he'll be back Monday, Monday to Monday. I thought I was like, okay, well, whatever. But, I mean, he'll be gone a lot. He'll be working. He'll be playing with his buddies and her, his girlfriend or whatever, so. Yeah, that's And true. then it'll just be, you know, Caleb. Yeah. And he's pretty easy to deal with. Just throw some mac and cheese on and he'll be a happy <laughs> camper. I know. I've got to finish that book. I, st- I keep starting to edit it and then I just get really tired and lazy. And, uh, and then I start jerking okay. off your underwear. And then I go to sleep. <laughs> I get some cotton layers off, <laughs> just stripping Lighten cotton. Load a little bit. And just strip that yeah, cotton. They were worn out. They needed to be cleaned. <laughs> Ew! And you're getting layers off of there <laughs> from all the gas. Right? No, I wasn't jerking you're off the back of your underwear. Put was... your finger in my butt. You won't let me. <laughs> that is something that I would enjoy. <laughs> enjoy. I and, see what you did there. Yeah. It was something I would end John. <laughs> I might be playing in probably an early evening game this week, I'm assuming. Of what? Uh, disc golf. Okay, that was a weird transition. Well, you no, know, I was you just thinking, you know what, I was because I just went into like normal life mode for a second. Like, oh, hey, this this week I'm probably going to be playing a game this week. Or, hey, I'm going to... So you're leaving this week and you're leaving this No, no, week. no, the 21st. Oh, so next week. Yeah, so... Next week, we'll talk about it again. I'm leaving this week. And then I'll forget again. And you'll be like, oh, my God, you're leaving this week? Are you serious? And I'm going to be like, yes, and I'm going to be gone. All day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. See you Sunday night. Bakersville. Crystal meth and broken dreams. That is your line. I stole it. You stole my crystal meth. You left it there. You weren't going to jump I was going to. I was going to. You know what? I stole it. You know how hard that was when I was on Kill Tony to be like, yeah, John's kind of funnier than me. I'm not funnier than you. Okay. Who said that? I did. Okay, that's pretty cool. (laughs) (laughs) Well, is there anything else you want to talk about, weirdo? You want to go into some... I got other stuff we could talk about, but we'll wait. We'll talk about next week because I was just thinking about a super funny story. Ooh, Wait. wait. Tell it. Well, I, was th- I was thinking about... What was the story you were going to tell? You said, I have something. Oh, well, that, But then we were kind of going other places. So it was just I when I was cleaning up the side yard the other day, uh-huh. I was reminded of the story when the internet dude, the AT&T guy, came. And I pulled that fence out, and there was a, it was a nest of ground wasps uh-huh. under the fence. And I pulled the fence, and they all come ripping. I'm, I mean, I'm watching this highway of freaking wasp come ripping out of this hole. And I yell at the AT and T guy, "Run, AT and T guy, run!" And I start running. He's he's chasing me. <laughs> I got stung like ten times. He got hit like six, eight times, and we're hiding in the house. Fuck, fuck! It hurt so bad. But the, his look on his face, and I just start yelling at him, "Run!" Like he was gonna die. You, you never know. It was awful. I thought that was really funny, and it reminded me of that, so I thought I'd tell it instead. That was a good story. Short and sweet. All right, well, we're at 33. So that's what we got? We're yeah. Bouncing all over and end on that one. Fuck yeah, why not? Let's see. Do I have any other ones? I don't know. You just said you had one. Was had that lot. it? I was at one. I had lots, too. But we got lots of time, I suppose. Yeah. All right, well, enjoy your week. All right. Toodle. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Was that your goodbye? I don't know. Okay. Am I saying goodbye? Goodbye. I said good day. Good day, good day. All right.